guys. So today we're going to talk about um, tracking your food and why we feel like that is such a, an important part and step of this program. We're not telling you you have to track your food for the rest of your life. That's, that would be pretty mind numbing, but it's a really good step to um, help you experience some eye opening revelations about your habits, what you choose, why you choose them and kind of what you're eating. So I kind of have a little checklist of things I want to talk about. I want to talk about it helps um, you determine how nutrient dense your foods are. Um, it can help give you a sense of <clears throat> satisfaction. Sorry. Um, it can help you with options and planning. It can help you with accountability and honesty, which we know sometimes that's a real struggle for everyone. Um, Again, it can help you with mindfulness and awareness, um, especially when it comes to relating your performance to how you eat. Um, and then of course, just helping you create a sense of balance as far as nutrients, whether that be macro or micronutrients. So um, the first thing I want to start with is- hey, Can I interject uh, something real quick? Sure. Awesome. The other thing that I like to add in um, a lot of the times um, when I see trends and stuff like that, people are um, having a loss of control. It might not necessarily be in food, you know that. It might be yeah. a different area in life. Um, food tracking, every once in a while, can be a nice way of sort of taking control too and feeling like, it, 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 and it sounds a little counterintuitive, but it, it does actually like, okay, here is where I can take control. I can make these little changes. I can see it and your ability to, okay, yeah, I can take control now. So for me um, and the people that I coach, it, it, that's a subtlety that um, actually really empowers them to do um, some stuff as well. I totally agree with that. It's kind of like when everything in your life starts feeling like it's just off track and you've gone off the rails, right. kind of just you pull you back in, get you back on, back on track. Yeah, I mean, sure. really, I, you know, if you're coming to the game and you're like, ah, or you've taken like fun off the wagon and you held onto the wagon for a little bit too long and whatever, 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 sometimes it's just a nice, okay, just whatever you're here yeah. right now. And, and this is a nice way of just having a, a, you know, just a real eye opening, but the ability to take control and, you know, your other list of the accountability and the mindfulness and all of that stuff. It's very good. Very good practice. Yes, definitely. For sure. Okay. Perfect. So if we just kind of go back through that list point by point, um, the nutrient density thing, of course, that's a big one for us. Obviously we talked a lot about that last week with the foods, but I really like people to be tracking because, um, it gives you not just a picture of, Oh, how many fats or proteins or carbs are in this. And, and if you're old school pen and paper tracking, that is totally fine too, but you might get curious about your food and you might look up, Hey, well, how many calories are in this? How many carbs are in this? But um, I like it because it also makes people think about what kind of nutrients am I getting out of this food? Am I not eating the chocolate truffles because they're full of bad calories, fats, and carbs that I don't want? Or am I not eating the chocolate truffles because it's lacking the things that I want and I need? Right. So it kind of just creates an awareness there about like, what, what am I eating this food for? What is it doing for me? Right. Absolutely. Um, one thing that I do like, you know, we are kind of both of us not so big on getting wrapped around the axle about macros, but, um, and I'm not a proponent of all the time food tracking either. I like a more intuitive approach, but having an honest conversation with yourself, especially if you're training a lot or you're older or whatever, you're ability to withstand some of the things we're not doing right or a lot less. And so getting a real good, honest look at how many, how much proteins, protein slash fat you're getting. Cause I can't tell you how many times that I've worked with somebody. Yeah, I'm getting enough protein. Yeah. And either they don't understand what enough protein is. And obviously I come from the camp that protein is important. Um, but almost nine times out of 10, the people that I work with, aren't getting nearly close to the amount of protein. And so it's kind of an eye opening. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. That is, it's good. Yes, exactly. It kind of makes you go, Oh, okay. This is what I need. This is what I don't need. This is what's going on. It's or perfect. you're getting too much sodium or you're not getting enough sodium or, or, or just all kinds of stuff that, you know, Oh, okay, cool. 
this is where I'm at. I'm going to tell Rachel and she's going to tell me blah, 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 blah. Done. Right. There you go. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So um, point number two, and this one's real short, real brief, but I really like when people start tracking because they get this sense of satisfaction in a way they're like, oh, I, I ate like this today. I'm so proud of myself. Or I didn't choose this today. I'm so proud of myself. It's kind of like a you were a big kid today, <laughs> you were independent, you did what you should and, or what you wanted to do or what you planned to do. And it also makes people a little bolder, I think sometimes too. Like, I'm gonna try that hemp chia seed protein ball thing, whatever, so. Okay, yep. yep. Um, wait, we already talked about way of taking control, um, providing accountability. Um, Rachel and I have been talking about this, you know, as coaches in the background of how we help you guys learn how to be more accountable to yourself. It's a skill and it's probably one of the, the biggest reasons why we don't experience success long term within the nutrition eating world is because we don't hold ourselves accountable. We don't get the results that we want and then we go do, you know, some crazy whole food diet thingy, whatever. Um, you know, and do some of this yo-yo activity and we never really learn how to hold ourselves accountable and then experience the changes that we want long term. And so um, tracking your food, if you do it honestly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a you have to be real honest. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, it's a beautiful way to learn how to hold yourself accountable and then, you know, maybe even accountable the whole week. Not just the weekdays, but the weekend too. Yeah, because that can be, that can definitely be a weakness for a lot of people. You're structured Monday through Friday because you're in a routine. Saturday, Sunday, come mm -hmm. apart. So yes, for sure. That kind of accountability to help continue at least some structure throughout your day. And then something else, like I have at least one particular relative I can think of off the top of my head who has a host of health problems um, and when you ask how that person eats they say I don't eat that bad but they are not honest and they're not accountable and then when you say what's that bad and the breakdown is I had a donut for breakfast <laughs> I had fast food for lunch and you're like I think when you start tracking with that accountability you go oh well maybe my version of not of not that bad could really be a lot better right absolutely absolutely you know, as long as we're doing this kind of not in a harsh way, not in a derogatory way, just a, oh, okay. And if you see trends, oh, okay, look at yourself in the third person and say, oh, BK, yo, you need to start up and da 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 Anyway, yes. Oh, I know for me, I know, especially when I'm food tracking, my come apart is at night. I can eat super, super A game, then five o'clock at night, it's done. <laughs> I have to really make, you know, a con I don't keep the stuff in the house so I can make those decisions because I know. Right. That's this. Right, right, right. Um, so moving on, um, the next one, weight loss, um, food tracking, you know, it, you're saying, Hey, talk to us about that study. You put that in there. So I know I did. And then I took the notes. It's okay. So I can still talk to you about it. Um, <laughs> So, um, in one study, there were like 1,700 participants, and basically one of the biggest indicators of whether they were going to lose weight or not and be successful at it was that they were tracking their food. Because it does all those things. It creates that accountability and that honesty. And I think this kind of segues nicely. It also gives you options and planning. So, it doesn't mean I can't drink beer or I can't eat cake. It means I'm going to look at what I'm doing throughout the day and be like, am I going to work this in somehow? Is it worth it? Right. And, you know, that options and planning thing, um, just to talk to this very specifically um, about with runners and then athletes that are doing endurance training, um, there is not a tool yet that is smart enough to help us figure out like if we're Ironman training, half Ironman training, marathon training, you know, the longer, the bigger, the more important this is of planning and looking ahead. Because if you're doing a long brick, you know, say triathloning <clears throat> and you need 3000 extra calories that day, 
dude, you cannot do that all in one sitting because then <laughs> you <become> fatty, fatty, <laughs> for real, your body will be like, oh yeah, that's way over 500 calories. I'm just going to put that all in the buttocks. Um, goodness. Right. So right. the planning idea of, um, <laughs> planning ahead, um, or behind, however you do it, just because if you want to do this outrageous stuff, this BA stuff, you've got to do some of the supporting work underneath that. And it, and it is food planning. And what I tell my people is you don't have to track your food all the time, but if you track your food and learn the lessons at the same time, then the lessons stay and you generally have a feel for how you do this. Exactly. It, exactly. It's about just figuring out a way to make it work long-term by getting some valuable lessons in the short term. Totally. Totally. And you're right. Like you can't do all this BA stuff without doing all the support work around it, planning right. for after whatever. So true. So while you're doing all of this stuff, you're going to develop this thing called uh, mindfulness and awareness and say a little bit more about that, Rachel, because I know that this is a, a big thing that you love, love, love. Well, and you know, I think I love it just because of my own personal experience. Um, I'm one of nine children. And so growing up in a house with nine kids, you learn real quick, you don't eat when you're hungry, you eat when there's food. And if you think you're gonna go back and get leftovers, no, you're not. <laughs> so um, I grew up, I mean, I was a fearful eater. I would just eat and eat and eat and eat all the time because that's, you just have to get it when you can. And then I had this epiphany one day as an adult and I was, you know, doing some food tracking and just trying to be really honest and open and accountable with myself. And I was like, oh, I'm an adult. Like I can go to the store and buy food whenever I want. Like, holy crap. Like I don't have to shovel all this in right now in this moment. Like, um, and I just love for people to have those moments. And maybe your moment is not that maybe it's, you know, okay, I really eat when I'm emotionally upset or, you know, um, just anything like that. And I know as a yoga instructor, you probably have a lot to say about this. <laughs> well, I, I do, um, you know, but sometimes it's hard to eat intuitively, mindfulness and all of that stuff, because if you have other things going on, if you are coming from a history of child trauma, like when I grew up, I didn't have anything. Um, you, you know, and so for me, I mean, I don't overeat because of that, but um, my point is, is that when we're trying to be mindful and aware and stuff like that, we really need to be understanding what's driving us. So intuitively, we need to understand that just because we're saying intuitive doesn't mean it's always right, like healthy, right? Because sometimes our insecurities or the fact that we didn't have enough when we were little will drive inappropriate behavior. So this intuitive idea needs to be backed with sound principles, which comes back to the food tracking where you can't really lie to yourself in um, the mindfulness awareness. I try to add because my fitness pal is pretty good and awesome and all that stuff. It makes it it's kind pretty of comprehensive. Yeah. However, I find that, um, you know, sometimes I like to go old school and have a different form for them and say, what time did you eat? How are you feeling? How'd you feel afterwards? Um, and you know, you'll, you'll weed out those problems. Like for you, we're talking about, you know, eating just a ton at night. Um, and sometimes I find that that's because we're under stress all day long. And sometimes, you know, your appetite is suppressed when you're under stress. And then you're also a little out of control because your boss is a jerk face. And then so when you get home, not only does your appetite rear up because you're in letdown mode, but also you're trying to gain, regain a little bit of control because your jerk face boss isn't there anymore. And you're like, I'm going to eat that cookie because I can. <laughs> not because you want the cookie. It's because you're trying to regain a little bit of control. And if we're aware of that, then we're like, yo, okay. Not having cookies is not deprivation because cookies kills, okay? Not having an apple is deprivation because apples save lives. That's the epiphany for me. Oh, I could not love that more. No, yeah. for reals. Like, for okay, real, not yeah. giving your kids cookies is not deprivation, people. 
Yeah, you are not missing anything. I know, but you, but we do. We feel deprived. You're like, yes. oh, I didn't eat that donut that was sitting out. I'll, I'll never have another donut again. Like, uh huh. And I've never said it like that. And I need to go back and listen to it again because that's a great hashtag because it's the truth. But we need, we just need to really hear it differently. But point is, awareness. You start learning what's driving your eating habits, and sometimes it has nothing to do with eating. So true. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, performance, dude, this one's awesome. Talk to us about performance and eating. Well, so I love this one because obviously this is what we are all about, right? So you know that when you eat certain things, you perform better or you perform worse. And if you are tracking this, you, you start noticing a conscious pattern of maybe I shouldn't do this before. I do X, Y, and Z, or this was great. I had this the night before. I felt awesome. And, and maybe it's not enough to matter or make a difference, but if you're tracking, you can start looking for patterns and seeing things that help and affect you. Um, you know, some people do really awful with high fiber before races, and some people do absolutely okay with high fiber foods. It really sort of depends. And if you're tracking and documenting and knowing what's going on, then you can take a look at that and say, okay, this totally worked for me. I'm going to do this. I know what I ate before my last marathon. I'm like, I'm probably going to do that again. It went well. Even, right. if it just, even if it didn't actually work, that placebo psychological piece of it does something for you. Right. Absolutely. Um, and when it gets longer, like long, you know, ultra long triathlon stuff, mm -hmm. um, dude, you have, I can't tell you how many times a week I ask them in their comments, dude, what'd you eat? How'd you feel? What'd you eat? How'd you feel? I'll just all over and over and over and over and over again, because it's so important how you recover after a long workout. If you're mm. eating right and you're doing things, you know, sort of decently, and this sounds ludicrous, but for Ironman training for me, if I'm eating right and my nutritional status is fine, I feel froggy all the time. And it's because I have figured out, okay, I do this, I need to recover like this. And the way I did it was I was writing stuff down and I was finally figuring it out. And I don't need to do it anymore because I find what works for me. And that's where this kind of individual, everybody's different, you know, is something that you have to do. But again, if you want to be BA and not sick and not injured, you have to do this stuff. Yep, that is absolutely the truth. And if you want to do this for the long, the long term, you know, this absolutely. is something you want to do for the next 10, 20, 30, however many years. Yep. Okay. Um, and so the last thing I had on here was just about balancing, you know, just creating more of a balanced diet. But we really talked about that earlier when we talked about, are you not eating enough protein? Are you eating too much protein? Like just sort of you getting a feel for, okay, am I getting what I need? Absolutely. And it's another, we didn't really talk about this, but it's another way to create good questions that you can ask Rachel or myself. Um, so you educate yourself a little bit and then you come to us with smart questions. We give you better answers more for you. Um, and then you find that everything just is so, so much more cohesive and works better. And you're really surprised at, you know, you're not feeling overtrained because this is one of my um, pet peeves. Oh, it's just overtraining rest. And I'm like, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, you know, we're not uh, overtraining. Maybe we're under eating or under eating the wrong things, right? Like, right. Maybe you're undernourished for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, it's just such a, a wonderful thing to do to you know, have a better relationship with someone that you're getting some nutrition help with. If you're, you know, logging, like if someone asked me, Hey, after my long run, I felt da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, what da, 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 da. And if they can't tell me, what am I going to tell them? Well, exactly. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Okay. Yeah. Rachel, tell us about how to ways to track food Oh my gosh, there's so many amazing, awesome ways now with all the technology we have. Okay, so some of you guys got journals and are doing it old school pen and paper. Great, that's totally fine. We like that. Um, my Fitness Pal, we talked about, it's very comprehensive. Um, 
there's a couple other ones. You know what's funny is I, I lost my list, but that's okay. Cause there's my fitness now there's, um, lose it. So that's for the Apple iPhone. I like that one because people can get a whole week breakdown emailed to them. Get out. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Huh. Um, there's another one that I really like called macro stacks and I like it for the psychology of it because it has you counting up. Your goal is to hit all those macros. Whereas my fitness pal can kind of feel a little bit like a punishment. Yeah. If you're looking at calories and you go over and then you feel like, ah, the macro stacks app is, you know, giving you like, once you hit everything, you get the green light, but it has a fee. So, um, you know, take it or leave it. Um, oh, chronometer. I really like that one too. The chronometer one. I like, it's very comprehensive, probably comparable to my fitness pal. I don't know if it's chronometer or chronometer. Now that I say that, okay. um, how does, it, how does lose it fit with the comprehensiveness of my fitness pal? That, so I have never personally used lose it because I have an Android phone, but I have former clients that have used it and it seems to have a big database. So no one's ever said, Oh, I can't find this. I can't log that. So I think it's pretty comprehensive. Chronometer I like because it also does micronutrients. So you get to see your vitamin A, your vitamin C, your iron, your calcium, your magnesium. Like it takes all of that into consideration. So really, and there's like seriously a hundred other options. It's just whatever you will do on a day-to-day -day basis. The other one that you wrote down was um, you food. Was that something that you oh, wanted to talk about? Yeah, I actually like that one. This is for the people that are more like foodie people and they are very visual. You just take a picture of your food and it journals your food in a diary through pictures, which is pretty cool. And then you can look at other people's food and see what they've eaten and get ideas and it's got recipes, but it's so nice because it's just so visual and it's just a click of a button. Now you're not going to get all the little details, but you can go back and be like, look how much green I had today. Look, everything I ate was brown today. Like, you know, it gives you that kind of a feel. So yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. So that was um, Coach Rachel and myself chatting about logging your food. Again, um, maybe three days of it. Um, it's a nice eye opener. You don't have to, we like you to learn lessons from it, not do it all the time. Um, cause I don't view it as very sustainable activity. I'd rather be doing shenanigans than logging my food down. Um, how nutrient dense it is. If you're getting your protein fats and all that good stuff, accountability, control, weight loss, planning, 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 honesty, <laughs> awareness. What else, Rachel, you want to say? Oh gosh, I think you've covered it all and just ultimately relating to how it helps you perform. I do want to say one more thing. We haven't said this enough. What you eat matters. Amen. <laughs> okay. Have a good week, people. Ciao.